Hey, what's up guys? This is part 4 of my bar exam pointers in civil law. Pasensya na sa medyo mahabang delay. Nag-short vacation lang tayo sa Bali, Indonesia. So hope you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok para makita nyo ang ganda ng Bali. Anyway, here it is, my bar exam pointers in property based on the 2023 civil law bar exam syllabus. I hope na panood ninyo ang parts 1, 2, and 3. Kung hindi pa, you can check them by clicking the links in the description box below. So without further ado, get your family code, highlighter, pen and paper, and let's begin. For the classification of property, please remember Article 415 of the Civil Code for Immovable Property. Property is considered immovable by nature, like land, soil, and mines, by destination, like statues, machinery, and instruments used for works in the property, if they are attached by the owner of the principal property with the intention of attaching them permanently thereto, also by incorporation, like buildings, trees, and everything attached to the property in a fixed manner. So to distinguish this from those movables which have become immovable by destination, here the personal property cannot be separated from the principal thing without breaking or deteriorating the principal thing. So another difference is that in immovable by destination, the person who attached the movable or personal property must be the owner. In immovable by incorporation, it does not matter who attached the movable. What matters is how the movable is attached and if it becomes integrated into and becomes inseparable from the principal thing. Now, the last type of immovable is immovable by analogy, such as contracts for public works and easements. For the movable property, please remember Articles 416 and 417 of the Civil Code. Madali lang tandaan ang movable property. If it is not included in the enumeration under Article 415 of the Civil Code, then it is a movable property. Finally, it is a movable property if, it's by, if by its nature it can be moved from place to place and can be removed from the real property without impairment of the real property. Now you might wonder, what's the point? Why bother with the classification of property? Well, the answer is simple. The classification of property determines the laws and rules applicable to the property when it comes to formalities, need for registration, acquisitive prescription, venue to file actions, taxation, double sales, sales on installment, etc. Nagkakaiba ang applicable law or rule depende sa type of property. Now, let's talk about ownership. Take note of Article 428 of the Civil Code. Thus, ownership is the right to enjoy, dispose, and recover a thing without further limitations than those established by law or by the will of the owner. That said, remember the incidents of ownership, namely, use possidendi or the right to possess, use utendi or right to use and enjoy, use fruendi or the right to the fruits, use accessionis or the right to the accessories, Use abutendi or the right to consume the thing by its use. Use disponendi or the right to dispose or alienate. At syempre ang use vindicandi or the right to vindicate or recover. And because rights are not absolute, remember the limitations on ownership that may be imposed by law. Like legal easements, those imposed through the inherent power of the state like the power of eminent domain. Those imposed by the grantor or transferor, like conditions imposed by a donor, and the inherent limitations, like restrictions imposed by lease. Now let's talk about accession. Article 440 of the Civil Code provides that the ownership of property gives the right of accession to everything that is produced thereby, or which is incorporated or attached thereto either naturally or artificially. The first part of that statement is accession natural and the second part is accession industrial. Accession natural includes alluvium, avulsion, change of river course, and formation of islands. Accession industrial includes building, planting, and sowing. 
Speaking of building, planting, and sewing, or the BPS, alam ko, favorite nyo to. Favorite nyo i-hate. <laughs> Wag ka nun, be. Napaka-interesting kaya nitong BPS rule. Love it, kasi ang daming ganitong sitwasyon, lalo na at madaming land grabbers sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Ayun. Anyway, for this, remember Articles 447, 448, and 449 of the Civil Code. Now, pag-usapan natin ang mga remedies to recover ownership or possession of property. I will quote Culiado v. Gutierrez, GR No. 212938, July 30, 2019. So, an action interdictal or a summary ejectment proceeding which may be either for forcible entry, detentacion, or unlawful detainer, desahucio. For the recovery of physical or material possession, possession de facto, where the dispossession has not lasted for more than one year and should be brought in the proper inferior court, meaning to say, municipal trial court. Now, action publishana or the plenary action to recover the better right of possession or possession de jure, which should be brought in the proper inferior court or regional trial court, depending upon the value of the property when the dispossession has lasted for more than one year or even for less than a year in cases other than those mentioned in Rule 70 of the Rules of Court on ejectment. And lastly, action reivindicatoria or reivindicatory action, which is an action for recovery of ownership, which must be brought in the proper inferior court or regional trial court depending upon the value of the property. For quieting of title, it is defined as a remedy for the removal of any cloud or doubt or uncertainty on the title to real property by reason of any instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding that is apparently valid or effective but is in truth and in fact invalid, ineffective, voidable, or unenforceable and may be prejudicial to said title. In such an action, the competent court is tasked to determine the respective rights of the complainant and other claimants to place things in their proper place and to make the one, the I mean to say yung defendant dito, who has no rights to said immovable, res uh, immovable respect and not disturb the other. Yan ang sinabi sa Prodon versus Alvarez, GR number 170604, September 2, 2013. Now, let's talk about co-ownership. It is the right of common dominion which two or more persons have in a spiritual part of a thing, not materially or physically divided. Now, co-owners have the following rights. First, to use the thing owned in common subject to certain limitations, to share in the benefits, to benefit from prescription, to alienate, sell, or mortgage his undivided interest, to substitute another in the enjoyment unless personal rights are affected, also, the right to redeem the share of a co-owner if the latter sells the same. Now, still on co-ownership, pag-usapan natin ang sale by a co-owner without the consent of the other co-owners. Take note, in, in Cabrera v. Isaac, a 2014 case, it was held that a sale of a definite portion of a co-owned property requires the consent of all the co-owners. Without such unanimous consent, a co-owner can only convey his undivided aliquot interest over a co-owned property. He or she has no right to divide and thereafter convey definite portions thereof. However, in Bulatao v. Estonaktok, a 2019 case, it was held that the contract entered by the disposing co-owner is ineffective for lack of power in the vendor to sell the specific portion described in the deed and makes room for a subsequent ratification of the contract by the other co-owners or validation in case the disposing co-owner subsequently acquires the undivided or pro indiviso interests of the other co-owners. So, alin dun sa dalawa ang susundin? Siyempre, sundin nyo yung later or yung latest which is the Bulato versus Estonacto. Okay, next in the outline is possession. So ayon sa Article 523 of the Civil Code, possession is the holding of a thing or the enjoyment of a right. What are the concepts of possession? First, possession in the concept of owner. A possessor in the concept of owner is one who, whether in, the, uh, whether in good or bad faith, claims to be and acts as if he or she is the co-owner. Second, possession in the concept of holder. A possessor in the concept of holder 
is one who has the right to keep or enjoy the thing, the ownership pertaining to another. Meanwhile, what are the two characteristics of possession? Well, una jan ay possession in good faith. Under Article 526 of the Civil Code, a possessor in good faith is one who is not aware that there exists in his title or mode of acquisition any flaw which invalidates it. Second, possession in bad faith. According to Escritor versus IAC, a 1987 case, the possessor in bad faith is one in possession of property knowing that his title thereto is defective. Now, what is the relevance of good faith and bad faith in the possession of a property? Well, it is very relevant. A possessor in good faith has the right to be reimbursed to uh, the necessary uh, and useful expenses on the property under Article 448 in relation to Article 546 of the Civil Code. A possessor in good faith is also entitled to the fruits of the property before the possession is interrupted, Article 544 of the Civil Code. A buyer possessor in good faith has a superior right in double sales as provided under Article 1544 of the Civil Code. Now, in acquisitive prescription, a possessor in good faith has a shorter period to acquire ownership over the property as compared to that of uh, good, uh, bad faith. And in land registration, an innocent purchaser for value and good faith, coupled with possession, enjoys an absolute right over the property in exclusion of all other persons. Okay, now pag-usapan naman natin ang possession of movables. Please take note of Articles 556 and 559 of the Civil Code. Possession of movables is placing the thing under the control of the possessor. The possession of movable property acquired in good faith is equivalent to title, and one who has lost any movable or has been unlawfully deprived thereof may recover it from the person in possession of the same. However, if the possessor of a movable lost or of which the owner has been lawfully deprived has acquired the thing in good faith at a public sale, the owner cannot obtain its return without re reimbursing or paying the price paid therefor. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin ang usufruct. Madali lang ito actually. First, the definition under Article 562 of the Civil Code. A usufruct gives a person called the usufructuary the right to enjoy the property of another with the obligation of preserving its form and substance unless the title constituting it or the law otherwise provides. Now, here are the rights of the usufructuary. First, the right to enjoy the thing, the right to retain the thing until he is reimbursed for advances, for extraordinary expenses and taxes on the capital, and right to one-half share in the hidden treasure. Meanwhile, here are the obligations of the usufructuary. First, to make an inventory of the property, to give security, to make ordinary repairs at his expense, to notify the owner when the need for extraordinary repairs is urgent, to pay annual taxes and charges on the fruits, to notify the owner of any act of third persons prejudicial to the rights of ownership, to pay interest during the term of the usufruct if the usufruct is on the building only and the building is destroyed and the owner decided to construct a building, to pay interest during the term of the usufruct if the usufruct is on the building and the building was insured but he refused to contribute to the same and to return the thing in usufruct unless he has the right to retain the same for the payment of the extraordinary expenses and taxes which he advanced. Meron pa, to, to pay interest on the extraordinary repairs and taxes paid by the owner. Now lastly, on uh, usufruct, please take note of the modes of extinguishment. So first, uh, a usufruct is extinguished by the death of the usufructuary. Also, by the expiration of the period for which it was constituted or by the fulfillment of any resolutory condition, by merger of the usufruct and ownership in the same person, by renunciation of the usufructuary, by the total loss of the thing in usufruct. I know, familiar to kung nag-take na kayo nung makbar ng Supreme Court, no? Ayan, the total loss of the thing in usufruct. And also, by the termination of the right of the person constituting the usufruct. And of course, by prescription. Okay, next up is the topic on easements. If you look at the syllabus, there are no specific types of easements listed. So, this is a good thing. Hopefully, general concepts lang ng ismets ang itatanong. If ever man may tanong on ismet. So, here goes. 
First, remember Article 613 of the Civil Code, which defines an easement or servitude as an encumbrance imposed upon an immovable for the benefit of a community or one or more persons or for the benefit of another immovable belonging to a different owner. So for the characteristics of easements, please take note of the following. First, it is a real right. It involves immovable property. There are different owners. Easement is inseparable from the estate to which it is attached. It is indivisible even if the estates are divided. And there is no transfer of possession, only a burden is imposed. As to the kinds of easements, they are, first, as to its enjoyment, easement can be continuous, like easement of drainage, right to support a beam on another's wall. Also, it can be discontinuous, like easement of right of way. As to whether it is revealed, easement can be apparent, such as easement of right of way, or non-apparent, such as negative easements, easements of intermediate distances. As to type of burden impo imposed, easement can be positive, such as easement of light in view, duty to cut branches of trees. Also, it can be negative, such as an easement of light in view. As to establishment, easement can be legal, such as waters, easement of right of way. It can also be voluntary, meaning constituted by will or agreement of the parties. Now, an easement can be acquired through any of the following modes. First, by prescription of 10 years. But take note, this is applicable only to continuous and apparent easements. Also, easement can be acquired by title or agreement, by deed of recognition or final judgment, and existence of an apparent sign at the time of the sale. As to the effects of easement, remember the pronouncement of the Supreme Court in Pilar Development Corporation versus Dumadag, March 11, 2013 that by reason of this easement, the owner of a property must refrain from doing or from allowing somebody else to do or something to be done on his or her property for the benefit of another person or tenement. Ayan. Thus, the rights of the owner of the dominant estate are as follows. To use the easement or the burden on the servitude and to make on the servient estate any works necessary for the use and preservation of the servitude without altering or rendering it more burdensome. Meanwhile, the rights of the owner of the servient estate are as follows. First, to exercise all the rights of ownership including possession, subject of course to the burden imposed by the easement. Also, to make use of the easement in such a manner as not to affect the exercise of the easement or the enjoyment of the easement and to change the place or manner of the easement provided it be equally convenient. Last subtopic under easements is of course extinguishment. So an easement may be extinguished by merger in the same person of the ownership of the dominant and servant estates by non-use for 10 years when either or both of the estates fall into such condition that the easement cannot be used also by the expiration of the term or the fulfillment of the condition if the easement is temporary or conditional, also by the renunciation of the owner of the dominant estate, and by the redemption agreed upon between the owners of the dominant and servant estates. Please remember those general principles on easement. Even assuming that a specific easement is asked in the exam, I'm sure you can answer the question by applying the general principles on easement which we have already discussed. Okay, punta na tayo sa modes of acquiring ownership. Under the civil code, ang mga ito ay first, occupation. For example, hunting or fishing. Also, uh, but take note as far as uh, uh, occupation is concerned, ownership of land cannot be acquired by occupation. That's Article 714 of the civil code. Also, ownership can be acquired by intellectual creation, such as copyright or patents, by donation, by succession, by tradition or delivery, such as those in a contract of sale and barter, and also by law, for example, accession, fruits naturally falling on land, and open, continuous, exclusive, and notorious possession in the concept of ownership. Okay, and lastly, by prescription. Speaking of donations, note the items in the outline. First, are the features or characteristics of donation. And they are, number one, it is both an act and a contract. And here, the consideration or cost is the liberality. Also, it is a mode of acquiring ownership. It is perfected from the moment the donor knows of the acceptance by the donee. 
there is a resultant decrease in the assets or patrimony of the donor, it requires the necessary form, including delivery in some cases. For the classifications, donations may be, medyo madami to, ah, but take note yung mga um, common characteristics. No? So first, from the viewpoint of motive, purpose, or cause, a donation can be simple. Here, the cause is pure liberality. No strings attached, kumbaga. Also, a donation can be remunatory to reward past services which do not constitute recoverable debts. Also, it can be compensatory or conditional to reward future services or because of future charges or burdens when, when the value of said services, burdens, or charges is less than the value of the donation. And also, it can be onerous. And there are here, there are burdens, charges, or future service equal in value to that of the thing donated. For onerous donations, they are governed by the law of contracts. Now, also, a private instrument is sufficient. From the viewpoint of time of taking effect, well, obviously, alam to, a donation can be inter vivos or mortis causa. From the viewpoint of occasion, a donation can be ordinary or it can be a donation propter nuptias meaning it's a donation in consideration of marriage. From the viewpoint of object donated, a donation can be a donation of corporeal property or it can be a donation of incorporeal property. So very quickly, the following are the distinctions of donation inter vivos and donation mortis causa. Okay, so for uh, donation inter vivos, it takes effect during the lifetime of the donor. Donations mortis causa, uh, take effect after the death of the donor. A donation inter vivos must follow the formalities of donations. Donations mortis causa must follow the formalities of wills. Donations inter vivos cannot be revoked except for grounds provided by law. Donations mortis causa can be revoked at any time and for any reason while the donor is still alive. In uh, donations inter vivos, in case of impairment of the legitim, Donations inter vivos are preferred to donations mortis causa. In donations mortis causa, in case of uh, impairment of legitim, donations mortis causa are reduced ahead of donations inter vivos. In donations inter vivos, the right of disposition is completely transferred to the donee. In uh, donations mortis causa, the right of disposition is not transferred to the donee while the donor is alive. And lastly, for the distinction in donations inter vivos, acceptance uh, is required during the lifetime of the donor, while in donations mortis causa, acceptance is made only after the death of the donor because the property is transmitted only upon the death of the uh, donor. So take note, mga cause of law, that a donation which purports to be inter vivos but withholds from the donee the right to dispose of the donated property during the donor's lifetime is in truth one mortis causa. And yan ang ruling sa SICAD versus Court of Appeals, GR number 125888, August 13, 1998. Ibig sabihin that donation must comply with the formal requirements of a will. Remember that a donation is a solemn contract, meaning to be valid, it must be executed in the proper form. So let's talk about forms. For donation of movable property, if the value of the thing is 5,000 pesos or less, it may be oral but with simultaneous delivery or it may be in writing. If the value of the thing exceeds 5,000 pesos, the donation and acceptance must be in writing. For donation of immovable property, the donation and acceptance must be in a public document. Ibig sabihin, yung deed of donation dapat nakanotaryo. So, may mga limitations ba sa pag-donate at sa pagtanggap ng donation? Oo naman. Kung wala, ano ka? Diyos ka ba? <laughs> like all contracts, rights, and obligations, there are limitations. So, for donations, remember the following. The donor must reserve in full ownership or in use of fact sufficient means for the support of himself and of all relatives who are by law entitled to be supported by the donor. Also, donations cannot comprehend future property. Yan ang sabi sa Article 751. Yung kaninang rule, Article 750 yun. Okay, so magkasunod yan. 
Now, also, no person may donate or receive more than he may give or receive by will. That's Article 752 of the Civil Code. Also, speaking of limitations, i-consider nyo na rin or tandaan nyo na rin ang mga void donations, particularly Articles 739, 743, and 745 of the Civil Code. Go! Check them out and highlight them on your uh, family as uh, Civil Code. Okay, last sa topic ng donations ang reduction and revocation. So, very quickly, very quickly daw. <laughs> Sige, diyan natin. So, for revocation, this is total. It affects the whole property regardless of whether the legitimate has been impaired or not. For reduction, this as a rule is only partial and applies only when the legitimate has been impaired. For revocation as a rule, it is for the be benefit of the donor and or his heirs. For reduction, generally, it is only for the benefit of the heirs of the donor. Now, for the grounds, for the grounds of revocation, these are fulfillment of resolutory condition and, and uh, ingratitude. <laughs> okay, for uh, reduction, the grounds are birth, adoption, or reappearance of a child, in officiousness, insufficient property for support, and also when it is made in fraud of creditors. Okay, now we are down to the last topic in the chapter of property in the 2023 bar syllabus. Ito ang prescription. <laughs> Hindi yan. Not that kind of prescription, ha? Instead, the legal prescription. And according to Article 1106 of the Civil Code, by prescription, either one acquires ownership and other real rights through the lapse of time in the manner and under the conditions laid down by law or in the same way, rights and obligations are lost by prescription. The first type is called acquisitive prescription, which is the first part also of that definition. While the second type is called extinctive prescription, which is the second part of the earlier definition. Now, you've heard of the term latches. So, what is the difference between extinctive prescription and latches? This is what the Supreme Court has to say. While prescription is concerned with the fact of delay, latches is concerned with the effect of delay. Prescription is a matter of time. Latches is principally a question of inequity of permitting a claim to be enforced. This inequity being founded on some change in the condition of the property or the relation of the parties. Prescription is statutory, latches is not. Latches applies in equity, whereas prescription applies at law. Prescription is based on fixed time, latches is not. Yan po ang ruling ng Supreme Court sa Maniklang versus Baon, a 1992 case. Alright, so we're done with property law. Abangan ang bar exam pointers on land registration. Fingers crossed. Sana talaga umabot bago mag bar exam sa September. Ang civil law bar exam is scheduled on September 20. So that's it for now mga, ka, mga ka house of law. Please share this video to your friends para matulungan din sila sa review nila. As always, please press the like button if you like this video and subscribe and click that notification bell if you have not done that yet. So I'll see you in the next video. Laging tatandaan, isip ay buksan, alamin ang batas. Bye guys!